Today on Monkey Life. Worrying times for the team when Bart's mum Susie is taken to the hospital. It looks to me as if she may have a heart problem. Bueno Junior celebrates his first birthday. Who's coming first? The birthday boy? Go on, Junior. Your boy. And with no foster mum coming forward, the keepers take over the care of baby Bulu. Monkey World in Dorset, set deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr Alison Cronin, rescues and rehabilitates abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. This is going to be the first day that they've ever stepped outside, ever in their lifetime. The park provides a home for more than 240 monkeys and apes. Its aim is to give them as happy and natural a life as possible. The chimp team have become increasingly worried about Bart's mum, Susie. Over the last few weeks, they've noticed she's become rather lethargic and her breathing quite laboured. She's also been off her food. So they decided to take her to the park's hospital and get vets John Lewis and Dave Harding to take a look at her. It looks to me as if she may have a heart problem. So we're just getting ready to Go and anaesthetise her, and we're bringing her up here to do some scanning, x-rays, ultrasound, etc. Try and find out exactly what's the problem. John is aware of the risks, but believes the procedure is necessary. Chimps under anaesthesia, I lost count of how many times we've done it. I wouldn't consider that to be a big deal. A chimp with heart failure under anaesthesia might be a bit more um, tricky. The primate care staff, who know Susie well, have managed to inject her by hand, so she's already asleep. This is much less stressful for Susie than it would have been if John had had to intervene. Forget weighing her right now, let's get a tube. The veterinary team usually weigh all animals that come to the hospital, but they don't want any delays with Susie. Dave performs the ultrasound first, a scan of her heart, and immediately spots something sinister. Oh, John. Hey. Whoa! Can we just have the light out, please? Yeah. The scan shows some sort of mass near the heart, which shouldn't be there. It's a lump. That doesn't mean a tumour. It's a, a mass in the, in the... Yeah. Although it may not be a tumour, it's not good and everyone suddenly realises this is very serious. It's interior, it's on the right-hand side of the heart. If I had to say, I'd say it's more likely to be a mass than anything else, because it's, it's so dense. Yeah, the body's struggling to get into the right atrium. They're not in a good place. Medications? Yeah. Diuretic symptomatically, but, but... It's a terrible outcome. Dave thinks Susie's heart condition is inoperable. They decide to take an X-ray to see if that will give them more of an idea of what's going on. You, you can't see the heart as expected on that, John. Mm. It's just pure fluid, so... Um... There's so much fluid around Susie's chest that Dave can't see her heart. So they do one more ultrasound. They want to be as sure as they can that they've got this diagnosis correct and haven't missed anything. Um, and it, you see it's quite a large area of the right atrium is occupied by that mass. Yeah. And this is the blood vessel, the, the, um, yeah. the vena cava yes. coming into the right atrium here. And that mass is right sitting over where it should come in. So it's blocking blood flow coming back into the heart. And there's no chemotherapy drugs? Uh, unlikely. Terminal. Further, that other yeah. Than, than, yeah, I think it's trying to make her comfortable and freeze her mind or some sort of diuretic. What a shame. What I suggest you do um, is 
we bring her round and then give her on fairly heavy diuretics and see what that does clinically to her. Okay. With absolutely no guarantee of much improvement at all, but just to see, it depends how rapidly that's growing. The team are desperate to help Susie, but there's not much they can do. It's really just about as bad a prognosis as we could come up with, and it's terrible because I was hoping that if she had a mass, a tumor, whatever it might be inside, that it would be external to any of her organs and that we would be able to operate and remove it. But today's not our day. Difficult decisions are going to have to be made now because Susie's children, Bart and Eddie, are very close to their mom. The team are going to have to think of the best way to look after them as well as Susie. All primates need their mothers when they're young, but sometimes it's just not possible. Baby woolly monkey Bueno Jr. had to be hand reared when he was born because his mum rejected him after a traumatic birth. But he's now living with Lavar's group full time and is settling in well. Today, he's celebrating his first birthday. And because he's had such a difficult year, the primate care staff have decided to do something special. We've got him loads of presents all wrapped up, just full of really tasty treats, dried fruits, nuts, cereals, things like that, things they normally get in their scatter, but we've just made it a little bit special today by popping it in some nice wrapped up presents. So we're gonna fill it all in the playroom and hope he really enjoys it. The team are constantly thinking of ways to make life more interesting for the monkeys and apes who live here. They regularly give them enrichment to keep them busy or to make them work a bit harder for their food. The junior really likes the cargo net, so I'm just going to make sure we've got some up at the top because he's much happier up high than he is down on the ground. Today, the whole group will be invited to Junior's party. Who's coming first? The birthday boy? Go on, Junior. Your boy. It may be Junior's birthday, but that doesn't mean he gets first choice of the presents. The others are older and wiser and make a mad dash to grab them. The birthday boy hasn't had a look in yet and seems rather bemused by his celebrations. Kuna, who's been acting as a foster mum to the little woolly, is quite restrained opening her parcel. Unlike dominant female Paquita, who's already ripped hers open to get to the food. Two-year-old Manny is having a whale of a time with the till rolls the staff have used to decorate the playroom. Finally, the birthday boy has got his hands on a present. Although, like all children, he seems more interested in the packaging than the actual contents of the parcel. Meanwhile, boss Levar proves you're never too old to join in the fun. At last, Junior manages to get into the box and find his gift. Fruit and veg make up a large part of the Woolies' diet here at the park. Manny's moved on from the parcels and found one of our cameras to play with now. The celebrations have gone down a storm. It's always the sign of a good party when there's plenty of mess to clear up. For his part, Junior, who isn't quite so little anymore, seems to have got a taste for birthdays. Pity he'll have to wait a year for another one. Junior isn't the only one growing up fast. Golden Cheeked Gibbons, Tien and Kim are also maturing into adolescence. And their relationship is going from strength to strength. They've developed a very strong bond since being paired up a few months ago. Tien is the older of the two, and the team knew he was ready to leave home because he'd started singing on his own. A sure sign that he was looking for a mate. But Kim was only five, and there was concern she might be too young. However, she's embraced her new life and seems blissfully happy. She's also now started her colour change, Golden-cheeked gibbons are born blonde. 
They turn black at approximately a year old. But once they reach maturity at around the age of five, the females turn blonde again, while the males stay black with golden cheeks. The colour change takes several months to complete. Kim is the first golden cheeks gibbon to go through both colour changes at the park, as she was born here. Meanwhile, Tien's old family seem to have got used to life without him. His siblings, five-year-old Tia Nang and three-year-old Tio, play well together. Like all children, they push the boundaries with their mum and dad. But Peanut and Pongyo take it all in their stride. They're experienced parents and know when to pull in the reins. Coming up, heartbreaking decisions for the team. Bart and Eddie are going to be distraught. It's tragic. It's terribly, terribly tragic. And making way for new arrivals, it's time for Bubble, Squeak and Baby Rio to move on. The team are still trying to come to terms with the devastating news that chimp Susie is terminally ill. She was brought to the park's hospital for an investigation Whoa. because she was struggling to breathe. The veterinary team discovered she has a serious heart condition. As soon as we put the ultrasound on the chest and the heart, it, it was immediately obvious that there was something grossly abnormal in there. They found a growth which is inoperable. It's stopping blood flowing freely into her heart. I mean, the prognosis has to be poor, and, and you know, if you're sticking your neck out, you, you, you would say uh, in the region of weeks to months, um, but you, you never know, and, and you like to be proved wrong with these things. Susie is one of the more dominant female chimps in Paddy's group, and is not particularly old. She was brought to Monkey World in 1994, after being rescued from Spain, where she was being used as a beach photographer's prop. While living here, she's had two children, a girl called Eddie and mischievous Bart. They're both growing up now and are not totally dependent on her, but they are still close to their mum. And Bart still snuggles up to her at night. Susie was a natural from the beginning and has brought both um, Eddie and Bart up just brilliantly so that they are, they too are strong and confident in individuals. With no hope, the team could have chosen to euthanize Susie while she was in hospital, but they think that will be too much of a shock for Bart and Eddie. They feel the two chimps need to see their mum isn't well and is withdrawing from them. Susie's terminal, um, she's not gonna get better. Um, but if we can manage her so that she feels okay, even though we know she's got a heart that's going to be a problem for her, she might be able to continue for, a, you know, a, a couple of weeks or something. And then at least Bart and the rest of the group will at least be able to understand what's happening with Susie. So at the moment, it's a balancing act. You know, this is going to be terribly tragic for Patty's group. Susie's a significant member, and Bart and Eddie are going to be distraught. We'll wait and see. If the medication improves her quality of life and it's a very slow-growing tumor or mass, then maybe she'll have a longer period of time. I suspect that's not going to be the case, though, because the way her condition has progressed quite sh sharply in the last couple of weeks, I'm not hopeful, but um, most important now, we have to keep the focus on monitoring Susie's welfare. She has to respond to those diuretics and feel better, or we're going to have to help her out. It's tragic. It's terribly, terribly tragic. With more than 240 monkeys and apes at the park, the team are constantly having to face tough decisions about the residents here but their overriding concern is always their welfare. Hey, sweetie. Yeah, they're Over the last 12 months, they've been inundated with requests to take in marmosets, many of them victims of the British pet trade. 
one tiny little fall and he'd shatter into a million pieces. A new marmoset complex was built to house them, but it quickly filled up. So more building work is now underway. However, the team know that even that won't be big enough to care for the number of monkeys who need to be rescued. So, reluctantly, they're having to say goodbye to some marmosets who they've rehabilitated and find new homes for them at other wildlife centers. We literally have every single marmoset room we have filled at the moment. There is no room to spare. And unfortunately, there are still an awful lot of marmosets in the UK pet trade waiting to receive our help. So we've had to make the really hard decision to let one of our family groups move on to a new home, which is not something that we ideally would want to do. But um, like I say, we've got some cases that really need our specialist help. So um, it's a, a decision that we've had to make. Bubble, Squeak and their baby son, Rio, are going to Twycross Zoo in Warwickshire. They've been chosen because they're a very happy, close-knit group and the team are confident they'll do well there. Bubble and Squeak were confiscated by the RSPCA from a house in Stourbridge in the West Midlands two years ago. Squeak was already pregnant and gave birth to Rio soon after arriving at the park. As this is their last day, they're being given some tasty grubs, which they love. Locusts are particular favourites of the marmosets. Uh, obviously, extra big and juicy things are always going to catch their interest. Um, they can be quite good fun as well. Obviously, when they start hopping around the enclosure, they've really got to uh, have a good hunt for these guys sometimes to capture them. So, yeah, we try and give them uh, locusts quite often as a, an extra treat. <laughs> Go then, guys. Come on in. Bubble immediately spots one of the locusts and tries to grab it. His son Rio moves closer, eager to learn from his dad. Squeak, meanwhile, is quicker off the mark and is already chomping away. Rio has followed in his father's footsteps and managed to get one for himself. Rio's very inquisitive, uh, really interested in anything that's going on, but um, Squeak and Bubble are a little more wary, so they keep a close eye out. They're usually the first ones to alarm call if they see anything a bit strange. Um, but, yeah, they, they certainly keep a very close eye on Rio. Bubble, Squeak and Rio have been lucky. They were rescued and will now live out their lives happily together in a safe environment. But not all marmosets are so fortunate. Until stronger laws are brought in insisting on better standards of care in the British pet trade, primates like these will continue to suffer. As one family leaves the park, another primate is just settling in and causing chaos in the process. Baby orang Bulu Mata was brought over from Budapest Zoo a week ago. Sadly, his mum died a few days after he was born, and so it was decided the best place for him to grow up would be Monkey World. The park has the European creche for orphaned orangutans, and the team have a lot of experience looking after youngsters. It was hoped that Xiao Kuai, who's very maternal, would take Bulu under her wing, as she did Awan a few years ago. But despite showing an initial interest in him, she so far declined the offer. So for now, at least, it's going to be down to the primate care staff to look after him 24-7. And he's certainly keeping them on their toes. I think everyone would love the thought of looking after a baby orangutan, but believe me, it's a lot harder than it, than it seems. It's just like a baby, a newborn baby, really, um, and you have to be completely dedicated to him and be at his beck and call, basically, while he's this young. And it's tough. It's very tiring. The team don't want Bulu to get too attached to any one person, so there's a small group of four carers who are dedicated to him. This will make it easier when they eventually move him in with the other orangs. He's still not able to even stand for himself even. He can't even sit for himself. He's quite clumsy still, um, so not very mobile yet. And uh, yeah, that's the reason why we are um, actually handling him now. The staff want to familiarise him with his future housemates, 
so he spends most of his time at the nursery, although he still has plenty of naps. And just like any other baby, they can't leave him alone. So wherever his carer goes, he goes too. Whether it's up on the roof to feed his prospective playmates. We're going out. Be quick. Or outside to persuade them to come in when it's time for bed. Come on, Kai. Come on, Chakwai. Here we go. Come on. It's quite tiring. They sleep a lot, but they wake up a lot as well. So we don't sleep that much when we're taking care of them. And uh, it's high maintenance, um, baby orang. So, yeah, we kind of that's why we're still hoping that Chao Kwa is going to eventually uh, take care of him for us. Demanding he may be, but he's also adorable. And at the end of a long day, they always make sure there's time left for a play session before he goes to sleep. He's really started to develop a character now. Um, he's, he's very smiley. He's always been very laid back. Um, so takes things in his stride. He's been very good with, in introducing him to new keepers with the surroundings of the nursery with all those new orangutans to familiarize himself with um, but anything we can do that's going to help us to put him back um, and, put, and reintroduce him back to orangs as soon as we can that's the best thing we can do for him but unless Xiao Kwai has a change of heart Kate and Lewis could be in this for the long haul Next time on Monkey Life, Alison heads to the Maldives to rescue a slow loris caught up in a drugs raid. I'm not sure. This might be a lady. And Capuchin Joanne outwits Jeremy when he tries to take her to the hospital. Can you shut the door? Well done. 